So if you want to do that, that might be good. If not, I'll just summarize it. Fucking do it. You'll do it? See my back, I'll do it. See you the team. Welcome back, guys. Another episode of Chart Talk with Shake and myself. We'll be going over market outlook, member ideas, good trade, bad trades, some of the hilarious social media questions, uh, good uh, book of the week, and top of the, of the week. Shake, you want to get us started with the market outlook? Yeah, let's jump in. All right, market outlook. So, I mean, right now we're just seeing complete panic in the markets. Um, how quickly 340 goes down to. We touched two, below 250 today, closed down 11%. And we're just going to continue seeing. The market with these crazy gaps in the mornings, you know, the the fear is still still very much there. The panic is still very much there. We're just starting to see bit more and more businesses close in the U.S. So you know, you figure until we th this is just getting started. If this is the beginning of a you know five week, eight week thing um, where we're closing all businesses and you know they're, they're going to have to step in with some sort of stimulus. Who knows what it is? But right now. You know, it's a great time to be a day trader in this market, a really bad time to be a swing trader. If you're a swing trader, definitely step to the side because it's just like mayhem out there. So um, we're doing well day trading this stuff. But, and if you're on the sidelines, have no shame and just staying on the sidelines, waiting this out. There'll be great opportunity on the way up. Uh, what you got for me? So if you – I sent you that email with a couple of the charts. If you want to pull up uh, just that first one of the spy under Anisha's question, I'll just look a quick little – a little minute. So we don't even have it up. Oh, I got it. So we'll, we'll, we see here, again, we talked about this like a while back. Um, we talked about like the market needs like some legs. So if we're looking at, you know, going back to 2014, like 180 area, you know, we were in a very similar environment. All through 2013 up to 2015, we were just running to new highs. We were coming off, you know, the lows back in the financial crisis. Very similar market where we were in uncharted territory from a price standpoint. We had a first correction. We held 180. We bounced back to new highs. Another correction. We continued to hold 180. And every time we thought 180 was going to break, that the world was going to end, we were going to go back to you know, the 2009 lows, it just that didn't happen. And what we're starting to see now, or, or at least what I've been trying to keep a close eye on, and, we, and we've had talked with this, Shake, about like SPY 230, where we're starting to see a similar pattern again, where 230 held uh, back in 2017. We had our bear market last year that lasted for you know one whole day we got close to two, uh, 230 and it held and then we went on this crazy run and everyone thought it, we were going to go to you know 5000 in this buy and now we have this stuff going on so for me you know, I'd like to see us potentially kind of shake out that 230 and I think that just from a chart I don't care about the outside stuff and whatever everyone's freaking out about just from a, a charting standpoint I think if we can flush down through 230 and that's when everyone's going to really be as, as panicky as they are now and we get a rip back up through that, I'll definitely be a, you know, a buyer you know, versus whatever those lows are. Um, just because for how fast and how quick we've come down this far, you know, it's not like this market's going to drop another, even if it dropped another 10 or 20% from here, it's very hard to expect it to just, you know, just like when everyone at the top thinks to go higher. 10%, very hard for 10 drop is only just below no, this 220 this, now. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I think that just from a, a price and how stretch everything is, is gotten, it's not like you can have this five days in a row where it's going to just keep dropping 10%. And right. if it does, yeah. I know nothing and never listen to me again. But I think just from strictly a charting standpoint, I think if we push through 230 and get something to move back up, back up through it, that's when I'll be looking to add some more versus whatever that low is just you know, just from that percent drop. Um, so that's just my take on it. Um, with that, Jake, if you nothing else to add, I think we can jump into a few of the member ideas. Yeah, let's jump in. All right. Uh, so the first one, again, for um, Anish, again, we, we kind of talked about it. He was asked about the SPY 233, and we kind of went over it. You know, At least for me, I'm looking for a flush down through 30 and, and a buy back up through it. Shake, if you have anything to add, we can. And if not, we can. Yeah, I mean, that's found pretty spot on. Uh, we're, we're very different. So it's like I, I don't have the, the macro levels I'm really looking for. Yes, I'd like to see 230 flush to buy and stuff like that. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very intraday right now, so I mean, there's just tons of action to the long side and the short side every day. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not as much worried about the macro levels. I'm kind of 
you know, in the weeds every day. The market's down 11% today, and, and the whole alpha chat made money long. So it's like mm -hmm. there's, there's just so much opportunity if you're trading intraday right now. So uh, I'm going to let you take down more of the big picture stuff. Yeah. That's not my wheelhouse as much. Uh, I think there was actually one other thing that you had mentioned that I think was, was very good uh, in the shakedown where you mentioned, you know, a lot of the newer traders, they want to be buying on the big updates, the 10% updates. And then again, when we're down 10%, that's when everyone wants to be getting out. And and I even saw this on Friday when the market was up 10%. And I was buying, you know, the UTX and AXP and a lot of those names that had ripped into the close. Again, now they're all lower. A lot of the people that weren't as hesitant or willing to buy up through, you know, UTX or 96, they wanted to buy it at 108. And then now today we're back at that price. And that's what you don't want to do. And, and you mentioned that, you know, very good where you almost have to want to be looking to buy things like when it's a little bit scarier yes. than versus crazy 10% updates because you've already missed that move. Right. Those updates are like the opportunities to kind of get out of stock, not exactly. try to get back in. And it's hard for us to kind of say that to a broad group, even to our guys, because you can't, we unfortunately open up like Pandora's box where if a name's down, like I'm looking at NTR rates on 28%, we don't want to give that trader the thought of, okay, this is going to be a great buy because it's down 28% today. Right. It's going to be up 20% tomorrow. Catch 22. But, so that's where those, we have, we sometimes kind of hold back for certain things because we don't want them to take it the wrong way. Um, but I think you, you said it very well um, in the newsletter yesterday. So that, you know, I think was great. Um, so with that, we can jump into Joseph Park. He had a couple questions on support buybacks. Okay. Um, and just broadly, he was saying like, you know, a lot of the support, bikes, support buybacks that he tried, he just got in too early. Um, so I emailed you three of his charts. Um, if you want to pull them up, we can we can go the, over them. Really. The first one, the the Dow. First one, uh, they're the black one. So there's gold, oh. there's Goldman, there's IBM. Oh yeah, I got it. UTX. Got so whichever one you want to start with, start with just let me know. Okay, um, so he was trying to buy verse that 200 area support, those little like yellow arrows that I put in the chart, which, and if you look below that, the green ones, those were like those macro levels of support. So he tried to support buyback, it just didn't work because he was trying to verse that level. And, and that's where when you're trying these support buybacks, you just have to respect the out, which would be that low of the day or the prior low of the day, because once it takes that out, it's it's getting smoked. Right. You know these are you know you have to just you're pretty much trading counter trend. So unfortunately, he was just too early, um, and we can see it again. You know, it came down to this macro support level at like 150. But these are really tight trades where you're you're buying up. You got to keep a tight stop and know that majority of these will fail. But when they do work, you can get really good stock. Right. That, that's what I was gonna say. Is like yes, you have to respect the the, the cheap loss or whatever. And it's more of a low probability trade because you're going counter trend, but you're playing for that snapback. So when you do get that win, it's going to be a 10 to 1 risk reward win. So that's yeah. the trade there. It's just too early and took a loss. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's traded, buddy. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So let me know that the other two were, was IBM and then UTX. Boom. IBM. Okay. So again, he, I, I, he drew out the horizontal lines. He was looking at this 128, 130 level. So when we talk about support, you know, when we flip it to resistance, we want more attempts at that level to buy on the, on the way up. Buying support, the more times that name hits support, the more likely it's going to smoke it lower. So we see, you know, IBM Similar, going back. Similar, same premise when we love super macro bull flags, when we love it when it tests it for the hundredth time and does the bull mm -hmm. flag, high probability of breaking out. Same, same premise. Ex ex yeah, exactly. So the problem when you have an in that continues to test support like IBM, it, you know, it tested it one, two, three the fifth time you want to try it, if you were buying IBM on that first retest and buying up through it and the second and the third time and the fourth and you kept taking those trades and the fifth time it fails, then you know to move on. Yep. But if it's, if it's the fifth time is you're trying to get in now, it's like you're literally going to catch the exact price you want to buy and it just, it's going to head lower. Right. What, uh, what we used to say on the desk, um, what happens when the last guy gets in, when the last guy figures yeah, out the like, support buy? Oh, it's out. It's out. <laughs> and that's why. Oh shit, and even, look, there's in them. <laughs> yeah. uh, so and that's even, like we were talking about just before with the spy it now being the third time bet down to 230 very broadly if this was the fifth or sixth or eighth time down to 230 i'd be much more nervous than it only being the third where there's still a little bit of a chance right. uh, so that was just you know for this example joe it just it was too many attempts at support that's really the reason why you were too early unfortunately um, and then the last one is this utx 
Okay. So again, he was looking at this 120 level. You can I, again, I put those yellow little arrows to show you know it was soft support. It held all 2019. They respect that level. Um, but again, one, two, three, four time he's trying it. It's not too surprising that it gets smoked. Uh, for me, you know, and, and I've talked with you about the shake and a lot of guys now chat where I've been focusing a lot on the 2019 lows for me looking to try to buy things on the way up. So if, for Joe, he was trying to buy, you know, 121 versus 120 and it didn't work. I was trying to buy, you know, back up through 100. And on Friday, it actually gapped down through it. And it was like at 92, it was down 9%, 10%. And I was able to just to buy up versus 92, knowing that, again, the trade can easily fail and it did today, but it still bounced, you know, 15 points in two days. Um, so it was just, you know, for me, for a lot of these sport buybacks, I've been looking back to the 2019 lows. And trying to find these these bigger names, these you know UTX, IBM, like great name selection. It just you know he was just a little too early, and these are lessons that he learned, and they're very cheap lessons because again, you don't have a ton of money when you're just starting out. So when you make these little mistakes, they're not as detrimental as the guys who are DMing us who are like I have two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the sidelines, I'm gonna start trading now, and it's like all right, well you're gonna lose fifty cool. k of it. You know, uh, a lady who wanted to buy thirty k worth of IBM uh, two days ago. And I'm like, just start, start get, just start getting started. Don't even buy a, a share. And she hit me up today, and she's like, I would have been down four thousand dollars already. And I was like, all right, well, just keep bringing the free stuff. Like, you're up four grand basically. She didn't, didn't take the trade. Um, so again, that we had a very quick member ideas for this week. Again, market's pretty crazy, so it's it's really hard to be you know putting on swings. Um, I mean, you just so, shouldn't be right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, look at the market. The market fucking. We had, we were up nine and a half percent Friday. And we come in and we're gapping down ten percent. Like it's just not you're just not swing trading right now. It's not a good time to yeah. or be light and be able to give it a room like you are. Yeah, and even even with the things that are going on, um, people look like keep asking like, well, like what's when's this going to stop? And all the you know quantitative easing, all the, the the stuff the government's trying to do that's great, but unfortunately for the people that are panicking and buying you know a thousand pairs of thousand rolls of toilet paper, they don't really care about. Those types of things. What what they want to hear is something related to this this virus. When there's some positive news about that, that's when everyone will kind of calm down and and get back to normal. And that's really what the market needs to see, at least in my opinion. When I think this fear will subside, was when we get some news related to that specific topic. Um, we were, we were so ahead of our time uh, buying the hundred dollar roll uh, of toilet papers. You know, <laughs> we should have been selling them for fifty bucks a pop right now. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that was just hilarious. I, I wish I took pictures of those. And that was nothing to do with this. I just thought it was just hilarious to have I know. hundred dollars know. rolls of toilet paper. Um, so, <laughs> so with that, we can jump into some of the social media questions. Uh, first one is Luca underscore um, Brand, Branduri. And he asked, how can we protect our investments in this market? Um, well, I mean, you don't want to sell anything now that you were down – 30% off highs. Uh, I'd say I'd say sit tight for now. You know, I don't know. Wait for the bounce back. What do you got? This is not mine. This isn't mine. It's just too. I mean, it's so broad. It's so broad. It's like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if we're if we're talking 401k, I told the paper. I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's like if we're talking 401k, do not change your con- don't. If, if I'm talking to myself about my own 401k, it's like I'm not touching the allocation. I'm taking. You know, I'm not touching that account for 40 years. Right. This market. You know, it's just like not touching that account. IRA, same thing, long-term account, not touching. You know, if you have cash on the sidelines, probably keep it a little bit longer if you don't know what you're doing. This is really when people, and I'm trying to trying to find all those, like, the perma bears. Like, where are all these guys who were waiting for this? Like, I'm trying to see some of those P&Ls of these guys who have been waiting for this. Well, they'll never like, have P&Ls, but their subscriptions like, are fucking off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but so, again, it's a very broad question. 401k, touch it. If you're new to the market, probably not the best Just time to get in. Side, yeah. Yeah, unless you're looking to really take on some massive losses. Um, another question, Mini24 Tran, you know, how long should we wait to buy dividend stocks? Again, if you're buying names like Coke, you know, Pepsi, you know, Procter & Gamble, a lot of these like staple names, as long as they're not cutting the dividend, you, know, you can pick up really good yield. In the energy space, we're seeing names um, that have had crazy yields that they're cutting dividends, you know, like Oxy, that – the div- they cut it dramatically, so they those are things. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that, that was. Been it like came a out. Fucking twenty five percent yield. Yeah, so there was like ba- even during like the MLP crisis years back, there was like one MLP that dropped to a dollar, never cut the dividend, 
and it literally was there for like one day and it snapped back to like 40 and it uh, kept the dividend. The you were like crazy. In century, yeah. That it literally you were getting like 400% just in the dividend. But as long as the dividend's not getting cut um, and you trust the name, you know, it's case by case. But if like for me, a lot of the names I've been focused on have just been Dow 30. Instead of trying to pick these like super low, you know, smaller mid cap names that are m- much more volatile, picking the best and breeder biggest companies, it's like, the cruise ship in the ocean versus you know riding the jet ski. If a dividend paying name, I'm going to focus on the cruise liners, not the cruise liners. Like I was say, talking uh, about the Dow Thirty names, those are like the you know, terribly timed not, metaphor. Not, not, not so Carnival Disney, Cruise Line. Yeah. yeah, not Carnival Cruise Line. Not any specific actual cruise liner. I'm just thinking, given the analogy of Dow Thirty as the big ship in the ocean okay. versus you know the recent IPO that's like the little jet ski. Okay. Uh, I like jet skis. <laughs> so I love jet skis. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, next up, we got R. Brody. Um, what would you recommend a first-time investor hesitant to make their first investment? All right. Um, obviously, you know, wait it out, sit on the sidelines a little bit, but I think it's important important for people now because, I mean, this is – it still is, you know, if you're looking at a 10-year or 5-year uh, outlook, it's still a buying opportunity right now. We're probably coming down lower. lower. It doesn't look we have, like we have any signs of a turnaround yet. But mm-hmm. so it's important to have a set amount you want to buy and then split it up into like fifths. Like, so you're only buying 20%. Like let's say mm-hmm. you buy the S&P right here, 20%. Wait a week, see how it reacts. If it, if it you know, goes down further or whatever the case may be. And then just kind of slowly, um, you know, leg into that trade or, or that investment. You don't want to buy everything right here. And then it goes down another 15% and then you, you hit out at lows. And then that was, you know, the bottom and stuff like that. So you don't want to, you know, put all your eggs in one basket, if you will. Mm-hmm. All right, definitely agree. Um, the next question, and I, I spoke with this person probably, so I'll answer because it it's hilarious. Um, his name is uh, Overdose Four Ten. He goes, "Any small stocks I should watch since I have a small account?" I verbatim DM'd him, um, "Why a small stock, or like why is it? You know, why is a small stock or cheap stock safer than a larger stock?" And he went nuts, and he he like lost his mind. Um, but again, people with the smallest, the little amount, littlest amount of money in the market tend to be the most emotional. The, Robert, the guys in Robinhood, um, but you see the guys who have more money in the market. They've had more experience. They don't get as nervous or as shaken up. Um, so again, if you're a very emotional trader, you're very new, you don't know what to do. It's, you know, maybe pick up a book for eight dollars and read it versus putting your money in the cheapest stock that's just going to get cheaper regardless of what the market is doing. Um, next, we got Man V750. He asked, how long will this bear market last? I would, like, God, let me know. I'm going to rub off a fucking crystal ball. It's all the same questions. If I knew these things, I would be yeah. so rich that you would never even see my fucking face, okay? <laughs> I will say, um, going into 2019, the bear market, technically speaking, a 20% drop from the peak to the bottom. Last year lasted maybe four hours that we were down 20%. Yeah. So far, we are technically day three in a bear market. So the last time lasted less than a day. So far, we're three days in. Just talking percentage-wise, strictly just chart, not. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to. I mean, 2018, 2019, um, whatever the time frame you want to call that. That was kind of an anomaly where we were in it for like five minutes. If you look at history, mm-hmm. we'll probably be in this this very volatile situation for, situation for months. Uh, realistically, mm-hmm. uh, you know, unless we see something crazy happen with the virus, just companies their their earnings are all going to be so slashed with all these closures of businesses. So I mean, mm-hmm. I think this time is definitely different from the 2019 situation mm-hmm. but it's just you know who fucking knows no one knows these yeah. things um next up we have um his name is at uh we asked 16 and when he asked uh, he sent this in he asked uh should i buy zoom now this was also this was today what and time? this was when zoom was up 10 percent ah well <laughs> I, i'm gonna talk about that in good trade bad trade obviously okay. you know um I, I, i'll say that for good trade bad trade no, okay. you shouldn't fucking buy it. <laughs> yeah, I, t- I literally sent this uh, shake and I'm like, you're just 10% late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so next up, yeah, we got at Amir. Uh, Lorif, um, if you were able to take advantage of this market right now, how would you do it? I mean, I, and we're speaking to, you know, ways that fit both our personal style. You're, you know, doing, looking for the snapback trades and I shrink my time frame and I day trade. So, I mean, it, th- this goes on to knowing yourself as a trader and knowing what you're best at. You know, I can't answer that for you. If you're a good day trader, it's a great day trading environment, but that, that shit is really hard to teach because you just, you can't, 
you can't hesitate to react. You just have to mm. take the trade no matter what, you know, and things like that. And then for your time frame, like I can't, I'm not going to take these trades. I'm not going to you know, yeah. buy things so viciously on the way down. I'll, 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 I trade off levels and things like that. And we'll get into that in good trade, bad trade. Yeah. So with that being said, we wrapped up all the questions. So we bad can, uh, we can jump into good trade, bad trade. All right. So uh, I'll start because I really want to talk about this LK, uh, LK, uh, Zoom. So the Zoom video. So uh, we were talking yesterday. This was this is the trade of the week, and um, the reason it's the trade of the week is that um, they're closing New York City schools for the next five weeks. I talked to some teachers, and they're all being forced to work nearly regular hours and be on Zoom like all day. And what the the Zoom CEO, what he did, uh, he made his technology free for everyone. This is a this is a jet ski stock in, in your in your Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, <laughs> comparison where it's like this is a recent IPO mid cap this is going to be trading very emotionally but what I love about this name is that it's not tied to the S&P or the Russell 2000 because it's a, it's a recent IPO so even if the market is down 10% this one can theoretically rage so I grab it I just want to oh, I just want to jump in one second shake just because some people aren't going to aren't they're going to they're going to go over their head so when you say it's not tied to the S&P not tied to the you know the Russell what do you mean by that so it's it's not in a, any ETFs so you okay. know these ETFs are comprised, the S&P 500 is 500 stocks. So if the market's down, uh, whatever it is, 10% today, and if you're in, the e and you're in the ETF, even if you're relatively strong, your stock's most likely going to be dragged down. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm looking for stocks like this or like biotech plays or things like that where they'll shake off the market much, much more. Now, we also see these stocks sometimes become completely risk off and get dumped, but this one is a special circumstance where it's like now all of New York City, all businesses are going to be work from home. They're going to just going to see a crazy amount of application, applicational use. So mm -hmm. let's get to the trade. So here's where my job is so difficult on the weekends, where I'm making a trade of the week. It's like you look at this chart, and then we look at this like mini little flag below 114. Now the guy who was saying, should I buy this up 10%, probably meant around this 114 area, where in mm -hmm. a good market, in a trending environment, where the market is trending up at like – more than more often than not, that would be a good buy. But because we're in this crazy hyper volatile market, and I'll show you with the executions where it's like a no hesitation environment, I can't mm -hmm. tell you to buy this at 114 and give it down to 103.20. And I'll show you mm -hmm. how I traded this. Um, so I, I even called off the open. We were walking into this uh, monstrous um, gap down today. We were like, all right, we're going to let the circuit breaker go off because we were down more than 7%. Goes off, opens 15 minutes later, and this stock's barely down. So I'm waiting to see, you know, some reaction out of the market. Uh, it's some sort of pivot. And then I'm, I'm looking to buy this thing against lows. And what I'm looking for out of the market, so I have a few, a few simple day trading rules where it's like, uh, and this is a pure day trading environment. You always, if it's a huge gap, you more often than not, right off the open, you want to go against the gap. We're down 10%. I'm not looking to short stocks. Similarly, as when we're up 2% on the, uh, in the trending updates, we're going to say we're going to let this open shake out. We're not buying stocks for the first hour because we need to consolidate that open or whatever have you. If we're down 10%, I'm more betting that we're going to snap back to down 7% than we're going to go straight to down 20%. So that's, that's the move I'm trying to capture. So whereas this ZM, we go back to the daily chart right here where it's like the 114 area looks good. You know, I buy off the open. I buy 104.50 with a 103.20 stop just to, right off that open low, and I'm kicking right into that first move. Now, I definitely could have done better taking profit-wise, been a little more patient, and this looks like I'm kicking nothing, but I bought 104.50, had a $1.30 stop, and I started kicking 108, and I got kicks off above 111, six, fucking 5 to 1 right there. But, um, you know, I, I definitely could have held on, and it is that day traders environment where I could have captured a 10 to 1 move. You know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Maybe next time I'll hold a little piece and try to trail it a little better. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very wary of this market and, and, and how nervous it is. But, so King Flipper, shouts out to him, um, our boy out in France. He was like, he bought it off the open and sold it. And then he's like, can I buy this 114 back? And it's like, that's just such a different trade than this reactionary trade. And if you're buying it, you want to buy this like 113 area, you can really only give it down to this like 110 area to try to make money. So that becomes a very difficult trade. So when we have a huge gap against us, I'm going to be looking to buy the opposite way against that gap in the strongest name. So that's why the Zoom, you know, I've been watching this name for weeks. It has the relative strength. So the gap, the 10% gap down today where this was down, you know, 2%, that was an absolute gift. Uh, I definitely could have done better selling, but 
Um, I, I'm, I'm happy making money in this environment. I'm just trying to check off wins here. And it still ended up being, you know, a four to one risk reward win you know, in, in 15 minutes. Can't, yeah. can't be too mad at that. Can't, definitely can't complain. Um, any other charts you want to go over for good trade, bad trade? No, I just, uh, I just want to let everyone know, you know, I, I say things like, um, charts go out the window in this environment. And that's what mm -hmm. I mean, where it's like, you don't buy through 114 in this environment. You find a favorite fucking name. You buy and you buy uh, intraday move. You give it to a, a pivot low and things like that. It's just everything kind of changes in this environment. We don't really want to teach this stuff because, you know, this isn't where I make my money. My money is made swing trading in trending markets. Like, let that be very clear. But, mm -hmm. you know, there is money to be made during this time. If I'm sitting here, you know, and I, and I can take advantage of the situation and I have value to provide people, I'll tell them. But, you know, the money is definitely still made to, to swing trading long side in better environments. But right now, you know, it's some intraday action. You know, yeah, keep us I think we might have to make like a, a circuit breaker buy rule where if the name's up more than four <laughs> percent, you just you can't buy it. It's like yeah. <laughs> like that. I think that'll broadly will just help you know, most people. It's funny because these look like terrible kicks on my screen. You can't see right now, but it's like yeah. uh, I took it off in the first fifteen minutes. But it's just that the stock's range today, range was one hundred three to one hundred twenty. It's like. Things are really stressed. <laughs> the years, it's a year's worth right, of trading. Right, right, you know, uh, Oh, like man, this, if I could have gotten that 104.50, that 120 kick, that would have been special yeah, next like, time. Yeah, but, but I, you know, I hope, I hope people can hear the difference in, in how I'm trading now versus how I really make my money and how you just have to shrink everything down and kind of think like, as we're saying, you have to buy when it's ugly off the open. We were down 10% when I bought this stock, you know, and I was mm -hmm. just kicking into the snapback move of the spy. I didn't, I didn't anticipate us snapping back as much as we did, but whatever. I made money on a day when the, the market ended 11% and I made money long. So, you know, I can't yeah. be mad. Um, so with that being said, we can go into some of my bad trades. Then right. these all are lower than where I bought them at. But some, you know, hopefully some examples that are and some lessons. Disney? Them. But yeah, we can start with Disney. Right. Um, so again, this is a name that, you know, being in the year we were all pretty much waiting to buy like that 144 145, 150 area, you know, that earnings flag, and it's gotten, you know, absolutely destroyed recently. So if you pull up that, that chart that I sent you over, I, I, try, I try to draw, you know, that like macro level support that I was keeping an eye on, and I was, you know, a little bit too early. You know, so I bought up 396, and again, down here, I can't be absolutely perfect. You know, I can't, you know, buy 96 versus 92 and, and expect that low to hold. Like, I have to expect this to be a little bit more wide, a little bit more of like a feel versus when we're at highs buying through resistance. It's much more just you know repetitive. You know, buy up, sell up, blow a day, and then let it work. We're down here. If I could buy 96, and I have to give it a couple dollars. You know, in a few months, if we get back up into this 140 area, I'm going to have really good stock. Right? Don't mind having to give it some wiggle room. But again, I'm not jumping in with both feet. You know, betting everything I have on Disney at 96. I'm buying a little bit where if it still heads lower, I can still pick some more up. And then look to dollar cost average when that turn does happen. So again, I can't time the perfect low, um, but getting this you know 30, 40 percent off highs, to me you know Disney's not going anywhere in a year. We're still going to be going there. Um, so it's just a little bit lower than my current price. It's down one dollar from where I bought. I bought 96. Is that 95? You know, I'm okay with that. Um, UTX was probably one of my better trades last week. Um, again, we, we talked about it a little before. On that, what was it the tenth? I think it was on Thursday or Friday. That big green day up, you oh, know, you gotta, you gotta UTX. Chart. Let me get the daily. Oh, okay. You can you can leave the week clip. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. No, no. Got um, I got them both. Look at this. So, Look at this service. <laughs> so again, uh, UTX had dropped daily. you know forty two percent this month. Huge conglomerate. Opened down ten percent that day. It was a super little like doji at you know off the open. And again, the super little doji was a four to four point range. Right. So all I simply wanted to do was I wanted to buy up through ninety six, which was the high of the day, versus the low, which was ninety two, and I proceeded to you know completely fill that gap. Um, and the next day it opened up a little bit higher, than again completely reversed. But in this trade, you know, this four dollars risk, you know, it's like if, if Shake was taking this, you would have crushed it because you would have you've been taking profits off the whole way up into that move. Yeah. For me, it was just I was trying to get somewhere I can you know just be in it for a move, you know, back to highs, you know. Down the you know a year from now, yeah. um, and I know Drew Drew Bauman was in it, and he lost nothing, and he bought ninety six, rode up to one hundred eight, and then he got out break even, so he was able to be in for you know a crazy percentage move in two days and not lose anything. Where if you know if he didn't you know understand the you know, break even stops, 
things like that, he would probably be trapped in this name right now and be stuck in it. Where for him, it's like he lost nothing. He can get very back in in a week or two, and it's not going to matter to him. Um, and then lastly, was this American Express? Um, so this one, again, I was a little early too. It's a reoccurring theme. Um, tried to buy up through that 90, pretty much up through that 100 level. Um, and now it's just below it. So now like the next ad, again, it's still super wide. I don't really want to be buying up through 94, but I know right now really the out is like 80. Yeah. Uh, so again, this needs some time. This needs like a week or two to kind of, you know, it probably will still shake 80. We can easily still shake that out. But we need, like, once it can start to consolidate down here and get it moved back up through, you know, that 90, that 94, and then 100 down the road. Like, this is where I'm trying to build in to these positions as they start to turn. But again, these are very difficult trades to kind of teach people because it just takes some time. And right. even when we think of, like, Yeti, you know, a few months ago, we had a great trade in it, you know, up through 35 into that all-time highs. And at that time, when it looked amazing. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of the guys are like, this is a long-term hold. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to hold it forever. And if you kept that mentality right now, you're down 50%. You're probably really pissed off. So that's where, again, there can be great opportunities to hold things longer term right now. But you or I don't know what those names are going to be. I'm just trying to get those deals now. And if you know American Express in two weeks wants to rip back up through 100, then I'll know I probably have some good stock in my hands. But these are things that, you or I or the next guy aren't really going to know unless you've done it before. You know, it's very hard to just buy something today and sit through some of these pullbacks and expect to hold it back to your price and then profitable. And that's really a lot of these lessons that traders will learn when they talk about long-term hold. When you buy on the way down, we talk we call it the round trip lesson where you try to get the perfect price on the way down, you sit through all the pain, and then as the stock does start to turn and it gets back to your price, you usually mean the stock's going to even trade higher psychologically, you're just in so much pain with the name, you just immediately get out at break even. And I've done this more times than I can count. But as you do it enough, you start to learn, you know, okay, now the stock's back to my price. As much as I want to sell it, this pro stock in time is probably going to start drifting higher. So I have to kind of sit on my hands. Um, so these are just some lessons that, again, they're very hard to learn when the market's gapping up or down 10, 20, you know, 10% or individual names 10 or 20%. So I'm being very light in these names. And I'm more heavily focused on dollar cost averaging in the broader sectors because, again, the financial sector isn't going anywhere. The telecommunication sector is not going anywhere. In a year from now, you're going to still use your phone. You're still going to you know, use a bank. So I'm putting much more my focus on just buying the broader sectors and markets, just dollar cost averaging. And then for the individual names, it's just the Dow 30, you know, large caps, the you know, best in breed, and focusing on that and, and forgetting the small caps or mid caps or some of those you know, jet ski type names. So that's that's all I got, Jake. Um, uh, I think we we can jump into uh, trade of the week if you have nothing else to add. Book of the week. No, we got uh, trade of the week. Oh, what I'm looking at? Yeah. Oh, I got I got to fucking do research. <laughs> I got right. I got an absolute um, dick. I'll have some for the, for the members in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I only got one more, um, which is I'm buying, HL. I'm buying Zoom on another gap down. Hope we gap yeah. down. So we got Zoom, and then uh, the only other thing that I'm looking at, again, this is a. a just chart wise, it's this HLI through 50. Um, you know, it hasn't really gotten too banged up given how, you know, crazy some of the financial names have reacted. Um, and we can still see that people have been, the last week, there's just people been buying, you know, buying this thing up. Again, it's a little bit of a wide range. So you, technically, it's up through 50 versus 44, which is a very difficult buy. That's like buying Zoom through, you know, 115. Yeah. So I'm not going to gung ho and just buy 50 versus 44. But if this can start to tighten up a little bit, and we can find, you know, buy through 48 or through 50 on, you know, $2 risk, that would be a spot that I, I wouldn't mind putting some risk on. But again, it's got to tighten up. It's, it's hard to give this thing, you know, six bucks right now. And then I think with that, book of the we week. get a book of the week. Let's jump in. All right, book of the week. I got uh, Markets, Mobs, and Mayhem <laughs> by Robert Mitchell. Uh, great book. I just started reading it. It's very timely. It talks about crowd behavior and kind of um, how people go into exuberance and panics. It starts off with, you know, the, the obvious ones, the tulip mania, and then, you know, the stock bubble, stock market bubble of the 2000s with the tech bubble. But then it goes into deeper, you know, character elements and, you know, leaders uh, throughout history, you know, and, and who have created similar crowds, you know, some good, some bad. I'm not going to dive into that <laughs> uh, wholly right now. 
It compares Adolf to uh, Martin Luther King Jr. I don't. They do. But <laughs> it, uh, really good, really good book. Talks about uh, crowd behavior, dynamics, uh, things of that nature. Uh, Bennett, what do you got for me? All right, I'm going to have to check that book out. Um, I have the, the Myth of Stress. This is by yeah. uh, Andrew Bernstein. Actually, I actually met this guy a few weeks ago. Um, Where'd you meet him? In the, out in the real world. No, he, he did like a talk. Oh. And uh, I was there for it. But uh, he talks about the myth of stress, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna walk you through like his like seven questions that helps mitigate stress for most people. Right. So, so for right, we can keep it like trading related, very simple. So, just tell me like a concise sentence about something that's causing you stress, and try to use the word should or shouldn't. Like I'll give you a quick, easy example. Like I should be making more money in this market. Right. Yeah. I, I should have caught that second move in the in the S and P today. Okay. You know, we, so, we, we raised off the open flag down and, and raised again. I should have caught that one. I didn't really okay. put it. Okay. So now this is the second question. How strongly do you feel? Do you agree with that statement? Like a zero to 10? Like, honestly, like a three, yeah. but for the, for the, for okay. the course of the so, example, so, seven and a half. <laughs> okay. So in this example, we'd be like, okay, this doesn't count, but we'll just keep it broad. We'll say I should have, you know, I should, I should be making more money day trading right now. Okay. So, That's okay. So volatile. Yeah. So now. When you say this, how do you feel? Does it make you feel afraid, angry, annoyed, anxious, confused? Like, what is there a certain feeling that you f feel when you make this statement? Yeah, anger, maybe anxious, not hitting the numbers would be the, the, the go to emotions in this case. Okay. And you say, when, and then how do you act when you feel this way? Are you angry? Do you feel belittled? Do you try to blame others? Do you complain? Do you cry? Uh, I cry. <laughs> <Brain>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm more manic when I'm trading, let's say. You know, I'm more tense. Um, uh, just more tense in general, you know, more okay. high strung. All right. So the next step is we're going to reverse that statement. So instead okay. of you saying you should be making more money, it should be, again, you shouldn't be making more money. I should not be making more money. Yeah. Now the thing, now, we, we, now in that statement we want to add in the beginning is going to be in reality and at the end of it, it's going to be at this time. Okay. So, so see if you can try to say it. Wait, wait. <laughs> I know, I know, I know this is especially hard when you haven't read through this. So. Your original statement was, I should be making more money. I should be making more money. So, so we're going to we're gonna switch time. it. We're going to switch it to, in reality, I shouldn't be making more money at this time. In reality. That's, oh, okay. So now this is the new statement. Okay. So in reality, I shouldn't be making more money at this time. So we flip the statement from what you're complaining about to the reverse. Now, how can we make that statement true? So like in reality, at this time, I shouldn't be making money because the market's dropping down 10% every single day, which yeah. is a very rational, rational statement. And then it goes through with like, and then again, a few more questions where, you know, how do you feel when you now say it that way? Like in reality, I shouldn't be making money because the market's gapping down 10%. Right, right. So Much I, more level headed. Yeah. Do I feel calm? Yeah. I feel, so that's, yeah, yeah. Kind of, that's like the premise of it. And then now once we say that statement, maybe instead of being a 10, maybe it's a three. And this is kind of the thing that this guy will do in every business, every role, any type of problem. He makes these guys and he started this out um, at a halfway house. Like guys who were just coming out of prison. And everyone who did this, they were like, I feel I shouldn't be here. And it was like, well, why? Like you were a drug dealer. You got convicted. So once they were able to flip that like switch and be like, well, actually, I should be here. I broke the law. I was selling drugs. I, yeah. I really should. you know. So by switching that, they were like, okay, instead of me, like for the people in the halfway house, they were like not paying. A, like, you know, you're just like, disengaged. Like if you're right. in school, you don't care about the topic. Once they were able to flip that statement, they're like, maybe I should take – this time more serious and, and you know so it's it's honestly a really good book and especially for where we are in the market and how crazy everyone is reacting right. when they go through like, this kind of questions it does kind of help calm most people down um so i, I think it's very time very timing specific with what we're going on with in today i think this could be very helpful yeah similar to mine very very good for uh the times we're living in yeah so i think with that i think we wrapped it up wrap it up b all right Until see you guys time. next week we'll see where this pies at. <laughs> Buy 150. <laughs> All right. All right.